it's me again. It's been a little while since my last video. This one is a lot less critical and is a tutorial. So I'm gonna show you how I paint using Clip Studio Paint uh, and more importantly how I paint using gradient maps. So let's get into it. Steps one and two are more or less interchangeable uh, and get you the same result. For previous paintings, I've started out by making a sketch, blocking out the character's silhouette, and then shading that in black and white. Uh, and I, I say black and white, I mean grayscale, not, not black and white. But for this picture, because I was including a background, I decided it would probably be best to block out the colors first and then shade it in. You can't see my layers in this recording, but I am putting all of the different elements of the background on different layers. And then when I get to coloring in the character and everything, uh, those are also on different layers. So the leaves and the beach, the trees, the sky, the clouds, they're all on different layers. And this is important because it will make shading in the next step easier. And I'm just coloring everything in real simple using the select and fill tools. I come back in soon after, after I've colored it all in, to fine tune it and make it look nicer, uh, get rid of any of the sharp edges. Uh, but you'll see that I'm just coloring it in really simple here for the base colors. I do a few gradients, but for the most part it's flat colors. And so the next step is shading. So what I do here is I select the different layers that I've made for the background, and I start layering black gradients over them. I have this really nice pen that I found for free on the Clip Studio Asset Store called Grunge Dot. I think that you should be able to just find it if you look it up on the Asset Store. And like I said, it's free. It's a really nice pen. It's fun for painting and for shading. It has a nice texture to it. I use that and the gradient tool mostly for shading in the different parts of this picture. And like I said, I, I just shade in black. And don't click off this video. Don't fucking do it. Don't click off this video. Listen to me. All right. The whole, I don't, I don't know who started this whole never, ever, ever, ever shade using black art tip, quote unquote. Uh, but whoever it is, they need to go read Hellboy. I need everybody to go read Hellboy. I need everybody to go look at the Hellboy art book, okay? And then shut the fuck up about how you should never, ever, ever, ever use black ever. Alright? Cool it. Sorry, I know that I said that this was gonna be a less critical speed paint, uh, but I'm a liar. So, whatever. But no, we're not actually shading using black. Uh, so that's, that's another lie. What we're doing is, okay, yeah, we are shading with black, but we're gonna go back and we are going to make sure that it's a multiply layer, and then we are going to make sure that the background of that layer is solid white. So there should be absolutely no transparency until you turn it into a multiply layer. I hope that makes sense. And then we are going to put a gradient map over it. Gradient maps are like one of the most slept on features of Clip Studio Paint. And I think that other art programs have them. I don't think that Psy has it, which sucks, but um, gradient maps are cool and sexy and an artist's best friend once you learn how to use them. And they're really simple. So up at the top, the top bar with like file and edit and all that good stuff, you're gonna go click on edit while you are on an editing layer. Uh, you can't just do this 
with anything. You can't do this on a folder, unfortunately. Uh, you have to do this on a visible and editable layer. But you're going to go up to edit and in the drop down menu there should be something labeled tonal correction. And then at the very bottom of that other drop down menu that you've just opened is going to be gradient maps. Clip Studio Paint comes with some default gradient maps. They're all bad, don't use them. What you should do is you should go to the Clip Studio Asset Store and... I'm not sponsored, by the way. I just need to say I'm not sponsored. I just really like Clip Studio Paint and I really love the Clip Studio, As Clip Studio Asset Store. Uh, people who put cool stuff on the Asset Store for free are the backbone of society, and I love you all. You're all getting into heaven. You can go and you can search by asset. So you can search for pens or whatever. One of the things that you can search for is gradient maps. And lots of people have just put out collections of really nice gradient maps. I would tell you which ones I have, but their names are all in Japanese and I don't speak Japanese. So, sorry about that. Good luck finding your own though. There's lots of options, like seriously. Anyways, once you've got your black and white multiply layer with all of your shading, just go ahead and slap some gradient maps over it. You can preview them before you apply the changes I like to keep a separate version of just the black and white so that I have the original because putting gradient maps over something that has already been gradient mapped tends to mess up the values a bit, but that's, that's besides the point. I just keep an original and hide it. And you can layer gradient maps. In this case, I used one and I set the opacity for that layer at somewhere around 40 or 50 percent and then I went back and I got another one and that one was at 100 percent but I gradient erased it so that it fades in from the lower right hand corner and after that I just kind of started dicking around. I have this nice pen called... hang on Okay, it's called the GGK Pen. I also got it off of the Clip Studio Asset Store. Once again, not sponsored, I just like the Asset Store. Thank you, whoever made this pen. It is so, so textured in such a nice way. Uh, it's originally a pixel pen, so it's, it's just binary, but I edited the settings of mine a little bit so that it's got a fuzzy edge and I can use it for normal non-pixel artwork without making my brain yell at me. But I took that pen and I went over a whole bunch of stuff. I added loose outlines and highlights to the background and to the character. And then after I did that, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna add all of this character's little accessories. Uh, and then I only added like half of them. Anyways, I'm no professional, I'm just doing this for fun. As I was drawing this and after I drew this, I did notice some mistakes. I forgot some stuff on this character's design and I realized after the fact that I'm, I'm not good at perspective. I, I knew that going in, I'm not good at perspective, which is why it is so important for me to use reference. But like, in hindsight, I probably should have made the character smaller within this picture uh, because he just kind of looks too big. Uh, or maybe the environment looks too small, I don't know. I'm not very good at putting characters in environments and making it look believable, which is something that I need to work on, so... I mean, it's, it's good that I drew this even though I made mistakes. Anyways, I think that that's all that I have to say. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope that this helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment, and I'll try my best to answer them for you. Thanks! Bye!